And welcome to today's latest mix up video for Monster of the World. Today's set is going to be focused around the Tower of Owl Horn Bow, with a set around increasing its main wall damage and making it as close to viable when compared to its bigger and older brother version. So, firstly, let's take a look at the weapon. The Tower of Owl Horn is a ready sun bow which has an attack of 264, which equates to 220 raw, minus 20 affinity, like most Diablo Space weapons have, 25 built in defense for armor usage, 300 hidden ice element, 2 augmentation slots and one close range coating which makes this version compared to the Sierra Coil Bend version a tad inferior for maximizing around the selected coatings. It's a ideal weapon to have if you don't have time to get the Sierra Coil Bender and just want a bow for fast and hard hitting attacks with little to no investment made as both weapons are one of the same except for them having different coatings and augmentations that are available. I would argue that this weapon is probably a tad more better to have just for the secondary og slot made available to you, which you can add on either another affinity og or attack og, which overall can net you an extra boost in damage when built correctly. On top of that, the weapon already has a high wall built into it, making this perfect for focusing on going the non-elemental route, so maximizing damage and critical base skills around it is quite simple through the necessary jewels given and used. Now as a compared weapon, this weapon is very similar, or should I say identical, to the Seal Coil Bender bow which is a rare D8 weapon and has near identical stats as the Tower of Owl Horn, with a few exceptions. Except from the colour scheme and design of these weapons, the Coil Bender only has one augmentation slot, which overall means you can't be as flexible as the Horn, with adding another Og slot or attack slot to further buff your damage. And on top of that, it also has 10 more minus affinity added to it, compared to the Horn's minus 20, which means you have to invest even more into clearing it. And at the same time, it also has 150 less hidden ice built into it, but that's not something a lot of players focus on when using this bow. However, with that being said, it does come with two level 1 jewel slots, so you can add in two more critical eye, health or attack jewels, which can benefit you more if you have an idea on what you want to maximise around for your personal skills. It also comes with a power coating, which is a 1.35 multiplier increase to your bow damage when used, and also has paralysis coating, which as the name states, allows you to paralyze monsters when enough is built up onto them. Now, as you can see, both of the weapons have their pros and cons, which makes both weapons ideal for two endgame users. Now, the horn is ideal for those that want to not invest so much into making a weapon as powerful as it can be, but ideal for putting a set together and making it work against any monster you face, through the use of just armor and charms or jewels. While the Coil Bender is more ideal for players that don't mind the investments, as they probably have the necessary jewels and armor needed to fully get the whole package out of the weapon, and want to make their set even more powerful with the included coating added. Even when you look at they both play the same, but both offer different investments in terms of what you want to get out of it, and how much time you need to invest for one set compared to the other. Now, with that being said and done, let's move on to the mixed set. So the mix set in mind will increase our Tower of Horn damage even more through the use of Ogs, Affinity and Attack Up skills, which is necessary part for going the full wall damage route, and also making use of its one coating, which looks like a turn off on paper for many bow users, but actually works very well for the current set we're currently using. So firstly, we have Critical I7, which gives us a 30% Affinity and helps with lowering down our minus Affinity into the positive range. Then we have Attack Boost 4, which further increases our attack and raw and gives us a 5% extra affinity when at level 4. 
Next we have Critical Boost 3, which helps with increasing our critical chance damage and is a worthwhile skill to have if only your affinity is above 50%, not below it, and definitely not on it, but above it. So around 60% affinity is a sweet spot for this skill to be active and at best worthwhile, but the higher it is, the better it comes off for you. Next we have Queen's Exploit 3, for the plus 50% affinity upon monster's weak points when triggered, Constitution 3 to help with stamina reduction cost when dodging or rolling around, and is a must have skill for all bow users, as it can allow you to fire your arrows more without running out of stamina so quickly. Then we have Normal Shots Level 1, which increases my close range coating damage, and lastly we have Non Elemental Boost 1, which further increases our attack and raw damage by a significantly large percent. Overall, this will total to 323 attack, which comes to around 269 raw, 75% affinity once Weakness Exploit 3 is active, 440 defense, which is fully upgraded, no streams are added, and quite a badass looking bow set for function and bow fashion. Now, as the weapon doesn't have a power coating, it won't come off having with some incredibly broken damage, which I kind of wish it did, since the Serial Coil Bender shows that with the same setup and coating used, you can get some incredibly high numbers ranging around the 40 plus to 50 plus range, or even more if you're lucky. But this doesn't make our current setup sound weak, as in fact, just using the close range coating with all the skills shown allows me to hit around 20 to 40 plus in terms of damage on monsters' main weak points. In fact, the damage is so great I can see this set being viable for some speedruns as long as you stay consistent with hitting the monsters' main weak points. Now, if you were to use your Dragon Piercer now, the damage would come out to around 50 to 70 max, and then lower down from there, which without the special ammo skill active, is pretty alright for a situational skill. But overall, I've got to say that this set right here is perfect for any endgame monsters with easy to access weak points, since the damage that comes out is exceptionally high for a raw bow style set. Now of course, the damage you do on other parts of the monster that isn't its weak points won't be large or breathtaking at best. But that shouldn't be of no concern, since damage is damage at the end of the day, and you can always reposition yourself to get a better angle on the monster. So, try this war set out against monsters like Rathlos, Raytheon, Nergiante, Basil, etc. And watch how fast you slay monsters with this relatively simple setup I created. So guys, if you enjoy the content then do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I would appreciate it a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon.